Thirty years ago, a ragtag group of protesters staged the first Earth Day demonstrations in a handful of American cities. Earth pollution is mind pollution. Now, for the first Earth Day of the new millennium, Time magazine is publishing a special edition devoted to a single topic, saving the environment. The good news is Earth Days have been working. Charles Alexander edited Time's first ever global special issue. The bad news is that we have much more work to do around the world. Among the contributors, Earth Day 2000 Chairman Leonardo DiCaprio, who focuses on the dangers of global warming, and President Bill Clinton, who points out that America's air and water are the cleanest they have been in a generation. President Clinton calls for making environmental progress a core foreign policy objective for the first time in America's history. The conventional wisdom has always been that it costs money to save the environment. Times' Eugene Linden provides an exclusive first look at a groundbreaking United Nations report on the state of the earth. This report shows that, in essence, the reverse is true. You can't have healthy economies without a healthy environment. How well will we be able to sustain our standard of living in the next century? We're mortgaging our children's future. One message that comes through loud and clear from this report, now is the time to act. In addition to presenting bold ideas for protecting the planet, Time's special Earth Day edition also highlights a host of heroes among us. All over the world we found people who were working with courage to protect their local environments. People like Echo Cop Ron Gatto, chosen as a personal hero by Robert F. Kennedy Jr., himself a Time hero for the planet. Ron is an environmental cop and he, his job was to arrest polluters. He was told from when he took the job that he was not to do his job, and he did it anyway. As an echo cop, one of the biggest problems uh, that I've seen over the past 10 years is the red tape and the problem with bureaucracy that you go through. On Saturday, April 22nd, half a billion people worldwide are expected to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Earth Day. For global listings of events and more information, visit Time Magazine's website at www.time.com slash earthday. And look for Time's global special edition on newsstands everywhere. Pollution is mind pollution. The good news is Earth Days have been working. Yes, we're paying more attention to the environment. The bad news is that we have much more work to do around the world. The conventional wisdom has always been that it costs money to save the environment. This report shows that, in essence, the reverse is true. You can't have healthy economies without a healthy environment. We're mortgaging our children's future. One message that comes through loud and clear from this report, now is the time to act. All over the world we found people who were working with courage to protect their local environments.
Ron is an environmental cop, and he, his job was to arrest polluters. He was told from when he took the job that he was not to do his job, and he did it anyway. As an echo cop, one of the biggest problems uh, that I've seen over the past 10 years is the red tape and the problem with bureaucracy that you go through. Most citizens want to save the planet. Uh, they want to leave their kids a livable planet. They know that that is by no means certain right now. What they don't know is that we could fix this at a profit if we uh, inaugurated a global green deal. If we pushed our government to inaugurate a global green deal, it would set off the biggest jobs and business stimulus program in history. We decided to publish this special edition of Time right before Earth Day 2000, the 30th anniversary of the original Earth Day, because we think this is going to be a huge event that will really draw tremendous amounts of attention to the environment. Ron is not alone, and there are thousands, tens of thousands of environmental enforcers around the country who have been subjected to the same kind of abuse by their employers, by the governor or the commissioner who wants to recruit dirty industries into the state uh, and, and wants to subdue uh, the activities of local environmental enforcement officials. When it comes to overfishing the oceans, Japan is one of the worst offenders. It's a nation that relies very heavily on the seas and yet is often disrespectful of the seas. 
Carl Safina, head of the Audubon Society's Ocean Programs, calls upon Japan and our issue to stop hunting whales and start observing fishing quotas. In Britain, we decided to pick a royal hero, none other than Prince Charles. For many years now, he's been a voice for the environment. In particular, he's been a voice for organic agriculture, agriculture that doesn't use chemical herbicides or pesticides, and also a voice against genetically modified food. In Canada, we chose Brian Staczynski, who is head of an organization called Destination Conservation. That organization goes into schools and helps teach his kids how to save energy, reduce waste, and also calls in engineers to retrofit schools so that the money that, that's saved by using less energy can go into textbooks, teacher salaries, or whatever is really needed in those schools. Two of the real gurus of the environmental movement are Amory and Hunter Lovins. They started the Rocky Mountain Institute in Snowmass, Colorado, and they've become global consultants, really helping companies learn how to uh, use resources more efficiently, use energy more efficiently, and reduce waste. It's that the, util the City Light was trying to save and ComEd basically wasn't until a couple of years ago. Now they only try to save load on energy. Uh, so I, I think that makes the point pretty strongly. In Brazil, for example, the great singer Gilberto Gil became so upset about water pollution in his hometown of Salvador, Bahá'í, that he joined the Green Party and won a seat on the city council so he could do something about the problem. Included in the pantheon of heroes are famed French oceanographer Jacques Cousteau, Greenpeace founders Robert Hunter and Paul Watson of Canada, American author Rachel Carson, whose landmark book Silent Spring jump-started the modern environmental movement, Brazil's Chico Mendes, murdered by ranchers after organizing fellow rubber tappers to protect rainforests, Kenyan Greenbelt leader Wangari Matai and India's Meta Patkar, who has led protest and hunger strikes against dams on the Narmada River. <laughs> 